So in case anyone wants to help by putting a star, um, this is the repo. Everything is open source. We got a bunch of great contributors and, oops, sorry. <laughs> and, um, and this is where you can find all the documentation and the highlighted features for Rama. So whatever you need, just click and get to the documentation. Everything should be documented. And if it's not, I'm responsible for that. So just ping me on Twitter on Slack or Slack. And I will do my best to try to fix this. All right. Um, but let's go back. If you want to start with the demo, um, I want to be honest. I totally forgot about the demo. Uh, so <laughs> we're going to make something. No problem. All right. So let's start with the Rama Cloud. I'll be signing up with GitHub. All right. This is the dashboard. This is where you can create and deploy indexes. You can upload files. You can connect to e-commerces. And of course, we will be supporting multiple um, connection going on. Or you can create uh, you know, different data sources based on webhooks, REST APIs, or even Docusaurus or you know, other, other platforms that eventually we will support. There is a nice analytics page, uh, which is coming soon with a, a survey. I would really appreciate if anyone could compile that survey. And in developers tools, this is where you can put your OpenAI API key, and we will see why you might need this later. Um, I've already inserted mine uh, previously because I didn't want to share it publicly. I don't want to go bankrupt because of that. So once you insert it, you can never see it again. The only thing you can do, you see, this is text. Um, you can just replace it with another one, and that's it. So let's start. I'm going to show you the data set. So this is going to be the data set. Right? It's going to be a thousand uh, video games uh, with title, description, rating, which is a floating point number, and genres, um, which is an enumeration of genres. And we are going to index this and deploy this at the edge. So let me show you how it works. Let's create a new index. Let's call it Agora Demo. Description is optional. Let's select JSON file because we're going to use a JSON file. And let's create the index. So now we can drag and drop the file here. And we will see a preview. This is going to help us in creating the schema. So if we create the schema, we should say title is of type string. Description is of type string, again. But rating is of type number. Genres, I have no idea how to pronounce this word, so I'm very sorry. Uh, <laughs> is of type enum, and it's going to be an array. You can also auto-detect the schema if you wish, but for the purposes of the demo, I'm showing how to properly write it. What's important to know is that you only should put data here that you mean uh, to search through. So if you don't want to search through title, for example, just remove it. Only put the data you want to search through or filter through. So we want to search through the entire data here. We will enable the automatic embedding generation. So we can select either OpenAI or Orama. For the purpose of this demo, I know a lot of people is using OpenAI already, so I'll be just using OpenAI. We can select which properties to consider for um, embedding generations. Right now, we only consider string properties by default. So title, description, yeah, we'll select both. Save and deploy. So this is going to take somewhere between one minute and three minutes. And the reason why it's going to be so slow at the beginning is because we have to calculate all the vectors. And we're going to insert all the vectors in our vector storage. Um, and so we have to rely on OpenAI. So for every single document, we have to call OpenAI, get the response, put it in the storage, etc. From the second time you're going to deploy them, uh, of course, there will be a cache. So it's going to be a lot faster. And you should expect such a small data set to be online in 30 seconds in 300 global locations worldwide. You can always see the status by looking at the logs. And as soon as this finishes, uh, you will see the endpoint and the API key that you need to make requests. So we'll do one thing. I'll go on Visual Studio Code. I already created a um, bit project. So we're trying to do that in like 10 minutes. We'll see if we can do that. Um, let's install a couple of dependencies. So first of all, ban, because 
I really like BAN, uh, I want to be honest. <laughs> so we will be using BAN. And I will install Orama um, slash Orama and then Orama Cloud. Maybe. Sorry. So we will install Orama and Orama Cloud client. Let's see what are them about. So Orama, of course, is going to be the Orama package itself. But then we also have Orama Cloud client. So this is going to be the client that we are going to use for searching on Orama Cloud. The API are the same that we are using for Orama open source, but this time we are searching on the cloud. In the meantime, we can see that this is proceeding in inserting everything, and that should be done now. So let's go back for a moment in our terminal. All right, we installed the dependencies. We can now go back here. I can't really remember how to start a project, so okay, that, that was easy. Um, ban run dev. All right, this is what we got. Let's go back. This is a very fresh installation. So we'll just go back here, remove everything. We don't want CSS, we want nothing. Um, my co-founder is the, is the head of design, so he's gonna kill me, I'm very sorry. <laughs> I won't be anything, I won't do anything very good. Um, all right, this is what we got. And yes, we also have finished inserting everything. So this took a couple of minutes, as you can see here, two minutes exactly. Um, and we got the API endpoint and the API public key. So let's go back here. Let's create a new folder. I'll zoom in a little bit. I call this lib, where we're going to use all our libraries. Let's create orama.ts. And now let's import client. So we can import a couple of things, orama cloud or orama proxy. Um, I don't want to talk about orama proxy right now, but we will see why this is interesting a bit late, later. So import it and export it. Export const orama, it's equal to new orama client. Oops. So a couple of parameters, API key and endpoint. So the endpoint is gonna be the API endpoint. And the API key, that's public. So you can share this on the front end, no problem. API key, here it is. We can start the heartbeat with a frequency of, say, three seconds and a half. So this is basically keeping Orama awake because it goes idle, uh, idle mode after you don't use it. So you, you just want to keep it awake. Um, we don't integrate this uh, built-in because sometimes you don't want this, but there's no time maybe now to discuss this. Let's just take for granted that we, we want it. <laughs> so let's go back here and import our Orama instance. All right. Then let's import, and again, I'm sorry, React developers. I'm gonna, I, I'm not a front end dev. So I'm gonna create something that it's not super optimal, <laughs> but let's import your state uh, from React and maybe use effect. We're gonna use that later on. Let's create search result and set search results. Okay, good. Great copilot, thank you. Um, we're also importing a type which is nullable from Orama. So nullable, it's basically telling you that a value could be null. That, that's pretty easy. Um, we can also import results, which is the type of the search results. And you can determine the type Going back to your index, this is basically the type. So you go back here and you say type uh, search results. Result, it's going to be, oops, it's basically going to be this. The num type is not a JavaScript, uh, sorry, a TypeScript type we're going to use now. Just treat it as a string. Rating is going to be a number. And description is going to be a string again. So that's really it. So now we have, um, let's call it type search results state, which is nullable. And we can pass search result. Cool. Now let's just create um, an input. And we're going to create a second state, which is search term, set search term, which is a string. And we now go here and say, all right, placeholder. 
search, not a movie, uh, something. All right, uh, then value is going to be search term and on change, we're going to, oh my God, I love compiler. Can I say that? that that's so, <laughs> <laughs> all the boring stuff, it's automated now. I love this. Um, cool. So now if we go back here, we will see, hello, cool. Um, let's maybe remove the CSS from there. All right. Again, um, maybe I can zoom a little bit. Okay. So go back here. Let's make some search. All right. So um, use effect. Um, we are going to spawn this effect every single time the search term uh, changes term and this is going to be the search term so that like if i search for example for i don't know um pokemon you know this is going to be the search term uh, then we have mode by default this is full text but i can also search for hybrid and vector these two are only enabled if you either provide um embeddings on your own or you generate embeddings with rama just like we saw previously so in that case just limit to let's say five and you can paginate by using offset. We're not going to do that right now. Then, this is, a, oops, this is a promise. So we can just say set search results. And we can catch any error with console error. I know this is not great. Um, yes, I'm probably, I need to specify this because of TypeScript. And all right, let's keep it as is for a moment. Now we got search results. Let's say if we have search results, let's just, um, I'm sorry, I think I, this is gonna be like this. So results, basically, um, I forgot to use the result. As you can see, this is the API response from Orama. So it's gonna give you the count. So if you search for Pokemon, for example, you have 1000 results. I'm gonna limit this by 10 results per page, but I'm also giving you the full amount of results inside your index. The hits, so the, the results themselves, how much time has elapsed, and face sets in case you wanted the face sets, and groups if you're grouping the, the request. So now we got search results, oops, dot hits dot map, like that, as a key, we can use result.id, and then we can say um, result title, oops, document, sorry, dot title. So you see this is inheriting basically the search result type we just, just used. We can probably also say div and make another div for result document dot, I don't know, let's say description. Hopefully. That should be enough. <laughs> All right. All right. So by default, I'm gonna, if you don't specify search string, string I'm gonna return to you all the documents. Of course, yeah. you can block this by saying just return, right? So, so you're, you're not making any requests if there's no search term, um, which makes sense. Let's maybe use H2 for this. Um, I know semantically it's not correct. But I can go back here and say Pokemon. This is working now. And I can search for Guitar Hero, maybe. Um, but you will see there is something that it's not going well. Like if you search for Guitar, you got Guitar Hero. This is because by default, Rama um, uses a threshold parameter. So if you go back here, for example, and say, let me give a, oops, a threshold of zero or 0 0.2 by default it's one we're gonna set zero that means as you can see now it works that means i only want results that has both of the uh, search term in it so if i search for guitar hero for example the search result either the title or the description has to have both and i can have guitar here and hero here that's fine uh, by default, we don't do that because you can customize this. Uh, by default, you could say also like 0 0.5, which means return 
all the results that has guitar and hero plus 50% of the results that only has one of those. If you have few results, that could be handy. You see why. But this is not the case. So let's just do that. Uh, so that's basically it. And I can also say, all right, but I want them where? In that case, um, rating is equal to or greater than three. So I can also say document title, and then result document dot rating. And now we should only have search results where the rating is greater than or equal to three. So let's try. Let's refresh. Yes, that's correct. You see, we, we basically don't have, if I search for A, for example, we shouldn't have results that have more, uh, sorry, less than three. And I can also say, like, you see now there, these are all three. Basically, we can go back and say, all right, let's do with four. And we go back, that's now four. And I haven't changed my search query. Um, we can do the same, of course, by saying only give me the, oh, sorry. Um, I forgot to put here um, H3. Oh, because I, all right. This is not a string. This is an array of strings. Um, so I can also say only give me the adventure. So where genre is equal to adventure or includes adventure and visual novel. So you can go crazy with all the filters you want. And this is how we basically create an index on Rama. I believe that's fairly simple, but I developed that with my team. So I'm looking for feedback here. Like if you want to join as a <laughs> as an early adopter and, and try this out, I'd be very glad to, to hear some feedback. And that's basically how we do that. And last thing we can, we can share is mode, maybe do vector. So threshold, it's not available when you're using vector. Nice search, for example, for um, game for children. You basically get data based not on the keywords, but on the um, on the meaning of description and title in that case. So that's how easy you can create, you know, um, your own vector search database that works on the client, so on the browser at the edge, et cetera. And I truly love this product and I believe this is gonna be interesting for many people. This is super powerful. Well, wow, thank you so much for walking us through this. Um, are you, are there templates available or planning to make any templates available so that, you know, people could do this, for example, with a ready-made uh, template? Yeah. Yeah, I really wish we would get this. Now you, um, you have one template specifically, which is, on uh, Vercel Commerce. So if you go on Vercel Commerce, for example, uh, you have Orama with the demo. So this is a demo using Orama Cloud, for example, or searching through the Vercel Commerce, uh, let's say cap, for example. So you can probably use the fork <coughs> as, a, as a template for your e-commerce website if you're using uh, Vercel Commerce, for example, and Shopify in that specific case. Uh, but yes, we definitely need uh, to create more templates, and we also need help to create templates, so we could get some bounties going, uh, if you will. I, I really love this idea, so yeah, why not? Yeah, absolutely. You heard it first, guys. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <on this cover. laughs> Perfect. Thank you, Michele. We'll be talking again soon. This was excellent, and thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank Until you. Until next time. Cheers. Thank you.